Hi friends, I'm Elizabeth of El Grey Crochet. I know it's been a while since I've last filmed. Uh, normally I would film at the beginning of the month, but um, it's just time she's gotten away from me at the moment this month. So now it's mid-September, which is ridiculous. So it just happened to line up that I have my knit crate uh, to unbox as well today. And today I'm also sitting in a different place again. I have sat here before uh, to film but not for a while. Um, the sun is getting more, coming more over, um, I suppose a bit more to the south. Maybe not quite the south, but like it's being less north. And so as we're approaching summer, and so that's exciting, but it does mean we get a lot more direct sunlight in our apartment, which is great uh, for, you know, sitting in, but not for filming or really so much photogra photographing either. I did that the other day as well, photographer. Photographing is what I mean, not photographing. Anyway, today I'm drinking some Rubios tea, or probably Rui Boss actually, um, in this lovely mug, which I bought as a set of four, and I gave each of the other three to one of my bridesmaids when I got married. Actually, when I asked them to be my bridesmaids, with some chockies inside. So it's a nice little reminder of my three lovely bridesmaids. So, yes, today is the 17th of September, and it's a beautiful sunny day, and yeah, we're heading into summer a bit more, which is exciting. Anyway, let's get into all the crafty chat. There we go, with the direct sunlight. I'm just like hiding behind the edge of the door, so you don't get all the direct sunlight. So this is my first finished object, my Netherton pullover. It's very exciting. This pattern is from Pom Pom Mag. I think it was from an older one that they re-released in 2017. Um, yeah, so it's the Netherton Pullover. The pattern does say it's a DK weight yarn, um, but I think it's quite a light DK weight yarn because it says per 100 grams it should be 300 meters of yarn, whereas turns out the yarn I used per 100 grams is only 180 meters of yarn. So you might remember last time I spoke to you guys, I was pretty confident I'd have enough yarn left to finish the sleeve. Unfortunately, I had to order a fifth skein because I finished my first sleeve and then I think I had about, I'd started a new 100 gram ball of yarn at the top of the sleeve and then I'd had about that much left from the body, decided that wasn't worth using the sleeve, started a new ball at the top of the sleeve, um, got to the end of the sleeve and I had about maybe 40 grams left, maybe one of those, and yeah I realized the difference in the lengths of yarn. So this is a much thicker DK weight than the yarn that they recommend, uh, which I didn't totally take in account for. I used a smaller needle size than the pattern recommended, so the pattern recommends for the body, I think a four millimeter needle and a three and a half for the ribbing. Whereas I swatched and I decided I would do a three and a half millimeter for the body and a three millimeter for the ribbing. However, then when I was doing the sleeves, I didn't want the ends to be too loose. So I actually did this, the ribbing on the sleeves with a 2.75 millimeter needle. Yep. So yes, I actually used five skeins of yarn, but now I have all these little bits left over that I can make something else with. Actually, I do have a specific plan for these. If you've seen on Instagram, I don't love this neckline because if I just, you know, wriggle a bit, it gets a bit, it gets a bit risky there. Risque. It gets a bit too much for me. I'm not totally comfortable with that. Um, I'm not really interested in if it's in style at the moment to have off the shoulder because it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> so uh, my plan is, and I think I can do it, I'm going to try and pick up the stitches around the bottom of this ribbing which is tricky especially with these short rows I'm not sure how to go with the short rows and then undo the ribbing and re-knit it with a 2.75 millimeter needle so wish me luck except that probably won't happen for a little while until I'm like totally 100% confident I can do it and just while we're on that topic I'm gonna jump into um Works in progress for a moment while I talk about some more knitting. So, 
perhaps you, I don't know, some of you might remember if you've been around for a while. I bought this yarn when I was in Katoomba way back in January at the beginning of the year, um, thinking I would knit some socks. So this is, I think it's the red yarn. So this is the tag for the yarn I'm using for the socks. So it's red yarn. Shockermeyer? I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, so it's four ply and it's got these lovely stripes that it comes up with. I do have a second one of these that's kind of more greys and browns and blues um, that I might make some socks out of for my husband. We'll see how we go with that. Because um, obviously then I have to make like size adjustments. But it's designed by Arnie and Carlos who have their own YouTube and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, they are knitwear designers and yarn designers. And so I've been knitting some socks. So this is the first one. I still haven't cast off because um, even though I found a video that has a it's like a stretchy cast off or bind off, um, I haven't actually watched the video yet. You might see I haven't got a heel. I've got this little, oh that's annoying. I've got this little line that I've knitted in here. Um, and then I'm gonna pick up the stitches below and above that to then knit in the heel. And so the pattern is also by Ani and Carlos and it's called the easiest sock in the world or the easiest sock to knit in the world or something. Um, they do it on DPNs, but I've done it all on my little circulars. So this is using the little chow goo set of the short circulars. And so this is with the little, I think these are like, I can't even remember the length of the needles, but this is with the really short ones with the shortest cable, so that makes a nine inch circular. And then this is with the slightly longer needles. And I think it's a longer cable. I don't think this one came in the set. I think I have it separately. And so I was kind of doing a magic loop kind of method using this one. And so if you don't know what magic loop is, you'll usually just work on two sides. And so, you know, on the side you're working on, you pull it like that and then I can so I've got one needle in there and this needle out here and then I can knit all along that side. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm doing at the moment. And then yeah, I've got my little mini circular. So yeah, so cool. They're like just self-striping and I'm really enjoying it. But yeah, so I think after I practice putting in the heel on both of these socks, then maybe I'll go back and pick up the stitches on this and try that. We'll see how we go. So, oh, and speaking of sock knitting, I got, I actually won these cards on Instagram. It's a set of cards, and so it's from Rainbow Pom Poms. There's it. And she's on Instagram, and so she has these cards, and you just fill out all the parts about your sock that you're knitting. And you know, you can say, you say what it's called, you say who you made it for, the yarn, the needle used, if it's toe up or cuff down, um, you have the amount of yarn used, which obviously I don't know yet. Um, you know, the length of cuff, the length of leg, if it's an afterthought heel, heel or whatever other heels you're using, the length of the foot, um, how many stitches you cast on if you're doing toe up, um, or it's also got decreased to number of stitches if you're doing cuff down. Um, and then it's got your type of cast on and then any other toe notes or then any other notes. And then you can give a little verdict at the end. Yay, nay, or yay, okay, or nay. <laughs> and so then they come on this little ring, a little sock charm. And there's a little holder, like put a little sample of your yarn in. I've only got like the sections of the solid pink and then this wiggly pink. That's a funny way to put it, but you know, it's kind of wiggly pink is exactly what it is. Yeah. So I do have another finished object, but I don't have it with me because I got to give it to a friend of mine yesterday. I mean, it was her fifth birthday. And so I made her an Amigurumi unicorn um, cause she is obsessed with unicorns. Apparently she already has a lot of unicorn toys. Um, they were telling me the unicorns are named according to size. So there's large unicorn, medium unicorn one, medium unicorn two, small unicorn, and tiny unicorn. <laughs> That's great. Um, yep. So, I insert a picture. Here is a picture of the unicorn that I crocheted. The pattern is called Flossy the Unicorn, and it is by Cornflakes 2. That's with a K. Um, 
and she's on Instagram and Etsy and yeah you can find her patterns on Etsy and yeah this is the yarn I use not in this particular color but I do like this color um, it's this one's from spotlight and it's valuable spot save like USA style so I think this is pretty similar in terms of like thickness and stuff to some of those like maybe some of the red heart yarns that look like this that you get in the US but I'm not sure. So this is thicker than a DK weight yarn, which is what I'd use for most of my Ringarumi, just because it's so widely available as an acrylic in Australia. Um, this is also 100% acrylic, um, but I just really like the thickness of this yarn and the Amigurumi that it works up. I think I'm actually getting weird sunlight here because even though the window is that way, the mirror is that way and it's reflecting all the sunlight. And so I've got light coming from both directions. I think that sort of works okay. Anyway, you can see there's weird light, but you know. Yeah, that's why there's sun on the back of this yarn. That's really weird. Anyway. Yeah, I really like this range of yarn, um, especially for Migurumi. I probably wouldn't use it for blankets just because I think 8 ply is a good thickness for blankets, but also it doesn't get that cold where I am, so. Yeah, so with the unicorn, um, I did start that one quite a while ago, um, intending to give it to the same little girl who I know, and I was using a much bigger hook size, and then I decided to start over. So I pretty much ripped it all out and then threw away a part because it was too hard to salvage that yarn, um, and then I started over. And it's a really, I think it's a really good pattern. I really like her patterns. I want to try more of the cornflakes shoe patterns get more into making more amigurumi because I really do enjoy it um, but also enjoy knitting as well apparently so um, I do have more knitting projects to talk about well one more um, a few weeks ago oh, about a week and a half ago so Michelle who on Instagram is my tiny garden she invited me to go on a trip to Skane Sisters with her um, which is up in Sydney and that's actually where we first met at Skane Sisters back in like April or May, I think it was April, that I went to do Deanne's um, shawl shaping workshop. And so, because Deanne had kind of a meet and greet, a few other people came. And yeah, so I've talked about Laura before, who I met there. And yeah, I also met Michelle that day. Um, so yeah, that's very exciting. So we went up to Skane Sisters together. It's one of my favourite things about all this crafty Instagram and YouTube community is meeting other like-minded makers which is lovely um so yeah at the time um i don't know i wasn't super motivated to make anything um yeah actually i think i'm meaning to talk about my month off of instagram just for a moment um if you want to hear read more about my month off instagram that i had in august i did write up a blog post um all about things i was focusing on and yeah, just how I was feeling towards the end of it. It was not quite the end. It was on the, I think, the 20th of August that I wrote that. So it was kind of 20 days in. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed having a month off Instagram. Um, it meant that I was motivated just to make what I wanted to make rather than what I felt like I had to share on Instagram. So this, I worked on my Netherton pullover for all of the month of August and pretty much nothing else. I think I might have started those socks then. Um, but that was about all. And... Yeah, it was just so good to, yeah, focus a bit more on just my health and especially my mental health. Um, just because I was, you know, just all that mindlessly scrolling, you kind of, I don't know, maybe you kind of lose yourself. That's maybe a funny way to put it. But, yeah, even now that I'm back on Instagram, I still won't scroll through quite as much. Um, yeah, and I'm finding that quite helpful just to have stopped that habit a bit. Um just all that mindlessly scrolling and being a bit more aware of it as well and yeah I think I've decided now I want to make stuff more what I'm excited about rather than putting a lot of pressure on myself to um, make stuff for Instagram especially um, thinking about like yeah maybe someday I'll be able to design a Mikurumi and I do have lots of little scribbled note somewhere but I don't want to be putting heaps of pressure on myself to be doing that right at the moment anyway enough of that rambling speaking of motivation I decided I would go to Skane Sisters with Michelle um, try to get a bit more excited about some yarn and so I did buy some yarn um, 
from Ren and Ollie. Actually, I'm going to go grab a couple of the labels so I can show you. So, some of the yarn I picked up when I went to Skein Sisters. Um, I got some Ren and Ollie yarn. So, I got some of this Spin DK um, from Ren and Ollie. And Ren and Ollie have some really lovely colours. Um, they do some, like... Or sort of solids to semi-solids and lots of speckles as well. So in the DK, in the spin DK for Ren and Ollie, I got these two colours which I thought were really lovely together. Um, so I am making something for my sister um, for her birthday even though we're heading into summer because you know what, too bad. Um, so this one is Pond. It's just really nice lovely blue colour. Um, you might realise this is almost the same colour as one of the colours I used in my blur shawl but it's DK weight so it's totally different. And then this one with lovely lots of lovely different colours blues and greens and a few little flecks of brown and yellow like a light brown is Tide Pool. So Pond and Tide Pool. And so what I'm making with those is another pattern which I also found when I was at Skein Sisters because they had heaps of samples of like knitted projects and crochet projects which is really good, um, like such good mode of like inspiration is the word I'm after. Um, and it's also good to actually like touch something and feel how it's, how it feels like, um, there's a shawl that I kind of want to knit called Birds of a Feather, um, which is kind of like starts off as a V and you kind of do some wiggly lines and anyway you alternate between like a mohair silk blend and a like a four ply wool um, and I thought I'd really like to do that but actually feeling it I don't love how the mohair silk works up um, and also I think it would be really fiddly to work with maybe so I might not do that one at least for a while um, so instead I'm doing, um, making a cowl, C-O-W-L, if you don't know what a cowl is, it's pretty much an infinity scarf, is what a lot of people call them, at least in Australia. It's a scarf that is a circle. Um, and so, I mean, it's not particularly exciting at the moment, this is the outside, it's just, at the moment, you know, knit three by one, so not very exciting, but it does become much more exciting. It kind of like you start with the one colour and you do the ribbing for a bit and then there's kind of a section where you fade from one colour to the next and then there's an, and that's a different pattern and then the third part is a third part of the pattern and then you just do just the second colour and I think it looks really nice. The sample they had in store was kind of a, a grey for their first colour and then the second colour was like a um, one with lots of different colours and it just worked really well having it fade from the grey into the multicoloured yarn and it was like a yarn that the tones kind of match really well with this particular grey as well so yeah it was really nice and actually the, the ladies at Skein Sisters are so helpful I actually didn't remember to note down what that pattern was named and so I sent them a message on Instagram asking and they got that back to me really quickly with what it was called um, so it's Copenhagen Calling I'm actually just going to double check that so I'm not telling you guys the wrong thing. Um, I have it on my Ravelry Projects page if you'd like to check it out. Yes, Copenhagen Calling. And so, yeah, it's using DK weight yarn. And you don't use the full two skeins either. Um, so that's kind of fun. Oh, you know what else is exciting? These aren't 100 gram skeins. On the back, it says 115 grams, but when I actually weighed them on my kitchen scales, and all I use my kitchen scales for is weighing yarn, there were like 122 and 124 grams. So that's exciting, right? So that's a nice, that one's a nice pretty easy project at the moment. I think it'll get a bit more complicated as I'm changing colours and doing different stitch patterns. Um, and then while I was there, I also got some yarn for myself because I could not go past this other Ren and Ollie yarn. I literally stood in front of the Ren and Ollie wall probably for like an hour just staring at it, picking up all different yarns, trying to figure out what I was actually going to make um, and if it's going to be for me or for 
someone else. Because I always just buy yarn that I think I would like to wear, but then, you know, I'd like to make things for other people, but I'm really bad at committing to a project because I'm like, I don't know if this person will like it. Anyway, I'm going to stop getting sidetracked and show you the yarn. The colours are a little bit mm, different on the camera now that the sun has disappeared. Um, but yeah, it's lovely purples and a few different shades of purple and it's green. And then this is very similar but with much more white. And so I think that would make a good kind of like two colour project. Um, this is a fingering weight, so it's sock yarn. Um, this one's called Velvet Cloak. Which I think I've seen a lot of people using. It's really nice. And then this one is called Pop Rocks. I mean, they're both super lovely. And I think I have other yarns in my stash that I could pair with this as well. And so, well, before I get to the knit crate, I want to talk about something else real quick. I feel like I'm talking way more than I thought I was going to this time. But every time I go into the shops at the moment, like clothing shops, I always feel like just very meh about all of the range of clothes that are there. And yeah, I'm just not, none of the clothes kind of get me excited to wear them or purchase them or like most of the time I'll even walk in and not even try on anything. I did try on some clothes the other day. Um, there was this really cute little skirt with floral fabric and pockets and yeah, I love pockets and skirts and dresses. Um, but then I had a huge metal zip that went right up the front. I'm like, no, you just ruined it. I don't like it. Um, and so, I want to sew, sew. So I want to sew more of my own clothes. And so I was thinking about it the other day, and I really like this account on Instagram called, well, Tilly Buttons, but the, I think the company is Tilly and the Buttons. Um, but on Instagram, they're Tilly Buttons. And, um... Yeah, they do some really nice patterns. They're based in the UK. I mean, the patterns aren't cheap, but they're pretty much the same price as you would buy, was well, at least I would buy a full price pattern for at Spotlight. Um, sometimes, of course, you can get Spotlight deals where you can get like five patterns for $10 or something amazing instead of, you know, $15 per pattern, which I don't think that's quite how it works out, actually. Maybe it's five patterns for $20. It's the special they have sometimes. But either way, it works out a lot cheaper if you do that. They only have that occasionally, though. But yes, patterns can be expensive for sewing. Um, I think people should charge more for their crochet and knitting patterns. But, you know, because a lot of hard work goes into those. Um, anyway, so I was in Spotlight. Yes, I was in Spotlight. And I was looking at their patterns for dresses and I was feeling a bit mad about those. Until I found this book in Spotlight. And this is by the Tilly and the Buttons. And so it has like a few different patterns in here. But also some general instructions for like sewing dresses and skirts and other clothes and um then how to modify those patterns that they have and you know some tips at the end on how to make your own things and so there's actual like they've got all the little pattern pages in the back here so you actually do get the patterns um so yeah i'm really excited there's one that i want to make because i always find like clothes on pinterest that i'm excited about but I want to do this one, which is the Megan dress, or Megan, depending on, you know, how you want to say that. So I want to do that one with pockets. Um, that's the Delphine skirt, which is nice. And then I'll just show you one more. Real quick, I swear. And it's got like, yeah, different ways you can change it, like doing a different neckline on some of the dresses. Um, oh, this is a cute dress. The Lee, Lilu dress. It's cute. So it's got some like, yeah, instructions on how to make that neckline different. Um, there's a little blouse. And I think there was a headband at the beginning. Oh, there's another skirt. And there's a dress that like, oh, the same dress. The same dress I showed you before. You could do two colors for the Megan dress. So there's one of the ways you could change it. Um, yeah, and they've got some like general tips on cutting your fabric and choosing fabric and all that sort of stuff. So I'm really excited to like do that. I know it works out pretty expensive to make your own clothes by the time you buy the fabric and everything. And of course put the time in because fabric purchasing is not cheap. 
but I don't love any of the clothes in the shops, so I think it's worth it. Oh, there we go with my sleeve again, shoulder, whatever it's called. Oops. I dropped some tea. So, on to the knit crate. I'm sure you guys have all been looking forward to this. I'm just kidding. But, um, so last time, you might remember, I was surprised by uh, the artisan crate instead of the sock artisan crate, which is great because at one point, yeah, I did ask if they could send me the artisan crate instead of the sock artisan um, and have a try of that one to show you guys. Uh, but um, it just didn't come in the month I thought it was going to, and it came in um, a month or so later. Which is exciting because the artisan crate looks great and you know what I don't need more sock patterns because I think plain socks are where I'm at at the moment um, and maybe once I've you know mastered a few sets of plain socks I can move on to the fancy pattern socks which I already have a few patterns for so yes um, yes so Last time, yes, I didn't look at any of their stuff online, like, I purposely was spoiler free. This time, I was spoiled, um, which is fine because, actually, in this artisan crate, there are three different options for a colour, so we still get to be surprised about the colour. I mean, of course, I know the three options, but I think I'm, I have a preference, but I think I will enjoy each of them. And you know what's kind of funny? Um, this is a sticker they come when I put on my parcels. They just wrote E Crochet because it's addressed to the first line of the address is L Grey Crochet. And um, I don't know if they actually thought that was my name because that's not what they normally put on there. But anyway, let's hurry this up before I run out of battery. I'm never prepared. I'm never prepared for this. There we go, there we go, there we go. Guys, 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 guys. Are you ready? Are you ready? Why? Okay, so it turns out I was wrong again about my box. Last month it was actually me that was wrong. Um, I didn't read the email that said I was getting the artisan crate last time and I assumed it would still be the sock artisan. This time, the email definitely said the artisan crate and there's the membership crate. But that's okay. I was just really looking forward to um, the artisan crate. It was a lovely um, linen, silk, and hemp blend, which I thought would be really nice to make something for summer. But that's right. This is a lovely yarn. It's from one of Knit Crepe's own dyers, so that's how I know it's the membership box. It's 70% merino wool, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere. It's sport weight. So for Australians, that's like a five ply, I think. Um, and the colorway is night. So it is a nice color. It's got some lovely dark and light blues. So there's two skeins of that one. Um, I just was super excited for those colours in the artisan crate. So that's a little bit sad. But that's alright. Still got some gorgeous yarn. And so I'll show you what the patterns are. They've been doing these booklets recently, which I really enjoy having the physical booklets with the patterns in them. Um, you can still get them on Ravelry and download them that way. Um, so this is the crochet pattern book. So if you are interested in the crochet pattern for the membership crate, the membership crate is the only one of their crates with a crochet pattern in it. Their other three crates are just knitting patterns. So that's the sock artisan crate, which, so the artisan ones are outside dyes and the other ones are their knit crate dyes. So yeah, sock artisan crate and the sock crate both have sock patterns, of course. Um, the membership crate, this one, has a crochet pattern and a knitting pattern and then the artisan crate has a beginner and then an, an intermediate to advanced knitting pattern. So, this is the crochet pattern for the membership crate for this month. And so, that is really nice. It looks like one of the other colorways must have been a purple, which is lovely. And so, I can tell you... There's some stuff about the designer, and so it was designed by Cecilia Losada, who is from Argentina. And then the knitting pattern is in the other book, booklet. And it's another lovely shawl. So it must be a green colourway as well. 
Okay. So that's all for today. Um, I am thinking some of my lovely knit crate yarns, because I have so many of them, um, I might have to give to some of you guys in a giveaway at some point. Um, maybe when I get to a thousand subscribers. So tell your friends to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe so we can get to a thousand subscribers soon. I'm on about 800 at the moment. So there's a little ways to go. I'm getting a little bit carried away thinking about 1000 subscribers already. But you know, I will have some prizes for you guys if you want some lovely yarns. I'll be giving some of them away. I'll keep some for myself as well. But I just have so much yarn and I don't know what to do with it all. And I don't have time to use it all. So I thought some of you guys might appreciate some of it. So yes, make sure you subscribe. Um, there's a subscribe button down there. And if you want to hit notifications, get that bell. And yeah, your phone will give you notifications for that. Um, if not, just hit subscribe and maybe you'll see me around YouTube. Um, yeah, don't forget to comment if you wanted to say anything about anything you saw today, ask any questions, and yeah, most of this stuff should be on my Ravelry Projects page, on Ravelry I am Hexokinase, so that's H-E-X-O-K-I-N-A-S-E. <laughs> and yeah, if you want to check out what I've been up to, feel free to check out Earl Grey Crochet on Instagram, that's the main place I'm active, although, you know, here and there, whatever, I don't put too much pressure on myself, so yeah. I like to share some fun stories on Instagram. That's kind of my favorite part. So yeah, I'll see you guys over there. Bye.